James, thank you very much for the invitation to Dynamatic Oldland Aerospace in Swindon. But uh, could you tell us a little bit about your company? So the company started in 1972, predominantly within the aerospace sector, and we specialize in aeronautical uh, monolithic components. And what you see today is a completely different revolution of where we've started and where we've come from. So where we started back in the early 70s, we were a jobbing shop and we did a lot of fast track for the, for the industry. And as and when our business has progressed and we've had new owners in 2008, we have come a very high production manufacturing uh, facility. And that's uh, stimulated automation within the industry that we're here to talk about today. And do you have any other plants in the UK or worldwide? Yeah, we're a worldwide company. So Dynamatic is uh, an Indian listed company on the Bombay Stock Exchange. In the UK, we have uh, three manufacturing facilities. One which is hydraulics, where we uh, single source to John Deere in the States. And we have two facilities, the Bristol, uh, which is the original uh, facility. And now in Swindon here, where we've expanded our aviation system. Now, with aerospace, you've got a, well, one, it's a global market, but also you need to be investing in the best kit. And today, we're principally here on behalf of REM Systems, who supplied the, one of Europe's largest Aurora system cells here. Could you tell us a little bit about that journey? Yeah. It's been a very interesting journey. So when we were an acquisition back in 2008, we made the transition between a jobbing shop predominantly to a full uh, production, working on the single R platform for uh, Spirit and Airbus. This is what gave us the first uh, communications with automation. So we've been working with uh, Aroa since that day. So back in our Bristol facility, we have smaller uh, automation systems where we have a very high efficiency in the high high 80s early 90s and that's what's uh, progressed the relationship to what we are seeing around us today where we have a part count here of over 250 going through this FMS cell on a day on a daily occurrence and, and what did you choose a row I mean there is other systems available in reference to sort of pick and place with robots but why a row um, it was their versatility to adapt with our requirements so with this FMS cell, yes, you are right, there's, there's many people in the marketplace. But what we wanted to do is have an FMS cell that can obviously give us the high efficiency that our customers require, but also be able to adapt with change. So Aroa, working with Dynamatic, we've actually managed to have each one of these machine tools, so there's five in total here, but each one can go into manual mode and can actually be uh, manufacturing R&D products as well as not affecting the production line as well. And that was quite unique. So Aroa, it was the first time that Aroa did a 30 metre cell and made it uh, very modular that we could run R&D as well as production at the same time. And I suppose the flexibility is that Aroa can work with a number of high-end machine tool companies as well. Exactly, exactly. So we have a lot of different machine tool manufacturers that we purchase. Uh, this one here is a German manufacturing uh, Hermely. Uh, but uh, as you quite rightly say, uh, we can also adapt it to other people like DMG, any, anybody in the industry. And that was the unique thing about Aroa. Their platform sits across any, any of the machine tool manufacturers, so it's very easy to adapt. And when we go on in the future, we can adapt the FMS system to different assets that we put alongside of it. When you look at the order books for the aerospace sector, I mean, obviously the builds are like 6,000, 6, 8,000 planes over a period of time, but what I'm really interested to know is what sort of capacity has it allowed you by having this Aurora system and sell? That's interesting. This, this actual platform was uh, purchased for a platform that the, the rates have actually come down. So currently when we designed this, we designed it for uh, getting close to 3,000 productivity hours per month with a high efficiency rate. So at the moment where the, the build rates have gone down on this particular aircraft, it gives us the flexibility to either insource ourselves with some of the production that we do more traditionally manually loaded and put them in this cell or go out to a client base which we're currently doing, selling our 1,600 hours a month capacity on this automation cell that we're talking about today. So really that's the message, is that a lot of the automation that you've put in here has, has given flexibility to talk to the marketplace, say, we've got spare capacity. Exactly, it gives you flexibility, and obviously every business case moves to the left and right, and this itself can adapt to that demand at any time. 
I know the future is bright for aerospace, especially for UK aerospace, but what's the future for your company? Will you be investing in more sales like this? Well, we're actually a very unique company. We are actually an Indian-owned company, but we believe in manufacturing in the UK. So as long as the efficiencies and the cost of capital is efficient in UK and throughout Europe, there will always be a demand for highly uh, machined parts like you're seeing today within, within Europe and especially in the UK that I represent. Well, it's been a fantastic journey. Thank you very much for your time, James. A pleasure to meet you. Thank you.